Welcome to the Supernatural Life Podcast with Chad Gonzalez, a podcast all about helping you connect with God so you can manifest God to the world. Now, here's your host, Pastor Chad Gonzalez. Hey friends, this is Chad Gonzalez. I want to welcome you to this month's episode of the Supernatural Life Podcast. It's our goal to help you connect with God so you can manifest God to your world. We had a tremendous, tremendous month in August. Lots of teaching and lots of miracles took place. I had the real privilege to speak uh, for Rama Malaysia. We did 11 sessions on healing and just had some great, great results. Got very good testimonies from that. Several people got healed. One of those I want to read to you uh, was by uh, Daton Iris Lynn. It said, for the past few months, I've experienced eye discomfort. My eyes are dry, tired. There was a secretion that blurs my vision. I claimed healing, used eye drops, rested my eyes often. I'd slowed down in my reading and writing, but my eyes weren't getting better, and I was very disappointed in myself. Well, praise God with this Rhema Fest uh, module, Anointed Healing, taught by Reverend Chad. God's Word is so well expounded in John 5, 21, Awaken the truth in my heart. I was fully persuaded that the, the Zoe life of God had been given to me, and it's in me the moment I received Jesus as my Savior. My spirit's united with God's death-raising power, which is waiting to manifest when I activate and draw it out. So I was holding on this truth. I laid my hands over my eyes, and I prayed that Zoe, the death-raising life of God in me, is flowing out of my spirit into my eyes, vitalizing, healing, and restoring every part of my eyes. I opened my eyes, I looked around, glory to God, everything I see is bright and clear. My eyes are now comfortable, neither dry nor tired. Praise God, they said, I'm in awe by the love of my Father God. It was great, we did 11 sessions on healing, and then I got the privilege and honor to speak for Skyline Church there in Malaysia, and just had a great service uh, doing that. We had to do that online, Malaysia, the country of Malaysia was not allowing U.S. citizens to come in. But it was really cool. We did that by Zoom and were able to chat with everyone and um, just had some real good good results with that. We've also been doing some other uh, videos called Healing Talks that uh, we're going to be putting more out. We've got a great response with those on Facebook and on YouTube and hoping that our international travels will open back up here in the next few months. So praise God for that. Also want to let you know that we will begin uh, filming for Volume 2 of the Healing Academy next week. So those of you that have taken part in Volume 1, be on the lookout. The latter part of September, first part of October, we, we're we hoping, that's our goal, to have Volume 2 of the Healing Academy available for you to uh, grab hold of. So praise God, be praying for us and believing for great wisdom and revelation for that to flow forth freely. And we're just expecting it to go farther and farther and farther in the things of God, and especially in the area of healing. Well, I want to get to uh, today's episode. You know, last month we were talking about whether it's deliverance that's needed for people or healing that's needed for people, because we saw in Scripture that sometimes some sicknesses, some disease can be caused by, you know, a demonic force. Now, like we pointed out last month as well, much sickness is the result of, of environment, lack of exercise, and proper diet. Especially here in America, our foods, for the most part, are pretty bad. There's so many preservatives and additives in them. So much you know, artificial stuff put in it. You really do need to bless your food before you eat it and just believe God that it actually is nourishment to you. But as we stated, you know, there are some issues in which the sickness and disease, this physical issue, it is the result of a demonic force. And if you look at society, society has rapidly been changing. We're seeing the increase of wars, economic downturns, worldwide viruses. And that leads to fear, which will certainly open the door to demonic forces in your life. If you were to watch television for just an hour, it's almost certain you're going to see at least one advertisement for some type of medication. Lacey and I, we were watching TV yesterday, and we started keeping track of all of the commercials that kept coming on, talking about cancer and talking about medications for, you know, these chronic diseases and this and that. And, you know, if you begin to feed on those things, you see that on a normal basis, you're bombarded with that. Well, then you start to become more inclined to thinking about those things, worrying about those things, and it leads to fear. Also in the U.S., we have an abundance of witchcraft 
uh, in our books, TV shows, movies. For years, it's been downplayed as innocent, and in many places in America, it's just accepted as good, clean fun. But friends, it's not. And through it, we're allowing Satan room to operate in our lives. And if you're a parent with kids in the house, you're opening a door there as well, and you need to make sure and shut that. So there are, there are sicknesses and diseases. There are times when it is caused by demonic force, demonic you know, oppression. And you know, just because someone, say the cancer was the cause of, of a demon, it doesn't mean that it's the cause of a demon in someone else's life. So, so please understand that there. But various situations, different circumstances, the disease of one could be because of environment, you know, or uh, their lifestyle. And another situation, it could be demonic. And we're going to talk about those things in a little bit more detail today. But if you have your Bible, turn over to Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 to 8. We looked at some of these last month, but I just want to review just a little bit. But in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, Jesus told the disciples, he said, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. And you know, I was talking to a a pastor friend of mine last night, and I don't know why, but here in this last year, for whatever reason, it finally kind of dawned on me the connection, the relationship that you see so many times between casting out of demons and healing the sick, that many times they, they go together. Again, not saying they go together all the time, but there are times where the person that's in need of healing, really, they're in need of deliverance because it's a demonic force causing that. And when it's a demonic force causing that, in many situations, you can do all the confession that you want, the laying on of hands and commanding the body to become right and all those type of things. But if it's demonic, none of those things are going to work because the force behind that, that demon behind that needs to be dealt with. And so this is why you see Jesus giving these commands. Uh, Another place that we looked at and we can look at again is what everybody knows as the Great Commission. Mark chapter 16, 16 through 18, Jesus said, These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Notice the very first sign, the very first thing that he said was they will cast out demons. Those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. Now, I don't know if you were paying attention to what was going on in in the church as a whole back in the 90s, but there was a very, very big emphasis on spiritual warfare and dealing with demons, dealing with demonic forces, deliverance, and just as with all things, just with all moves of God, uh, men and women, people get in the way, and what starts out as pure, people just start jacking it up and get off with it. And things were getting really, really off in the 90s. I mean, I, rem- I remember uh, some friends of mine in, in the town that we were at, I mean, they started having prayer meetings at the top of the, the tallest hotel in town because they believed they needed to get up as high as they could in the so-called heavenlies so they could do some spiritual warfare. And uh, you don't see any of that type of stuff in Scripture. You don't see Jesus dealing with demons there. But anyway, the point being, you know, God, I believe God was, was trying to, to bring some correction in that arena, bring an emphasis on it, and then people got in the way and just really messed it up. And then it got to the point where a lot of people didn't want to talk about it because there had been so much excess And we got away from some things. So you see this with Jesus' command to the 12. Uh, You see it when Jesus gives his command to the 70. Same thing. Told them to go heal the sick. Gave them authority over over demonic forces. Uh, And then we see it here in the Great Commission. When Jesus is giving it not to just the 12, not just to the the 70. But we know there was around 500 people there when Jesus was uh, raising up, going to heaven and gives this command. But just these two passages of Scripture, they, they tell me a couple of things. Number one, if I'm commanded to cast those devils out, it means Jesus must have given me the authority to do so. Number two, it tells me that this is a part of my Christian duty. It's a part of my Christian duty to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. 
if, if the Great Commission is a part of my Christian duty, then these other things that Jesus commanded me to do and told me I will see, they're a part of my Christian duty as well. Number three, it tells me it's something I need to pay attention to. I must pay attention to when I'm dealing with people that I need to be conscious of, of this. I need to be listening to the Holy Spirit on the inside of me to discern and determine you know, what the cause, what the root cause of this situation is. Is that you know, this person is acting this way just because they're carnal and they're not controlling their thoughts or, or their flesh? Or is it truly, is it a demonic deal that needs to be dealt with? And of course, in that regard, if it is demonic, it could have started out and most likely did start out with not maintaining their thought life. But in the situation that we're in and dealing with that person, it needs to be determined and discerned, is this demonic that needs to be dealt with? Or is this more of, of a, a healing thing that we need to take authority over their body? Or maybe they just need to simply change their diet and start exercising. You have all those factors that are in play. But I want to show you a couple examples uh, today in Jesus' ministry of people who were dealing with physical symptoms, physical issues, but the root cause of it was demonic. If you look over at Matthew chapter 9 and in verse 31 through 33, we find the story about the mute man. And in verse 32, it says, As they went out, behold, they brought to Jesus a man who was mute and demon-possessed. So there's a connection here. There's a relationship here. And in verse 33, it says, When the demon was cast out, the mute man spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen like this, no, not in all of Israel. So you see, when Jesus dealt with the demon, then the physical issue was taken care of. So obviously, this man that was mute, it was not because of some type of uh, problem within his physical well-being, so to speak. It was because of a demonic force a demon that was oppressing him and causing this to happen. So when Jesus dealt with a demon, the man was healed. We see it with, with the mute man in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 through 24. This is a man who is blind and mute. And in verse 22, it says, Then one was brought to Jesus who is demon-possessed, blind and mute. So you see the listing of three things here. It says Jesus healed him, so the blind man... Our blind and mute man both spoke and saw, and all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Again, you see another situation. This guy's not only mute, like the one we read about in Matthew 9, but he's also blind. And we find that he's demon-possessed. So you see a relationship here uh, with this physical issue, the, the blindness and the muteness. And when the demon was dealt with, the man was healed. Uh, we see this again with the boy who is having uh, seizures in Luke chapter 9, verse 37 through 42. You can, you can read that in its entirety, but in verse 42 it says, As the boy was still coming, or as Jesus was still coming, the demon threw him down and convulsed him. Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the child, and gave him back to his father. So again, here a third Third example here, here was a boy having seizures, having epileptic seizures, problems in his body. Jesus deals with a demon that was the force behind this, causing this problem to happen, and the boy was healed. And so these are just three quick examples here in Scripture, and there's more of these where the person that thought they were in need of healing, really they needed deliverance from the, from the demon who was behind the physical issue. And in all three of these cases, Jesus dealt with the demon. And when he dealt with the demon, the, the manifestation of their healing took place. Now, I've got several, several personal examples of this. I told you about two of them in last month's episode, the deaf woman in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. She was deaf in both ears. And when I put my hands on her, just, just knew by word of knowledge that it was a, a demonic deal we dealt with a demon and her ears instantly opened. And we found out later on that this woman had been a part of several cults uh, for, for many, many decades. And she had most recently been a part of David Koresh's group in Waco, Texas. And she had escaped a day or two before the FBI raided it. So certainly that was demonic. And then we saw 
the, the proof of it was that as soon as we dealt with that, her ears opened up. Uh, I told you a story about the mute man that was in Cusco, Peru, that when we dealt with him, I put my hands on him, began to pray, and discerned immediately that it was demonic, and dealt with that demonic force that was behind that, and instantly the man began to speak. Uh, I would encourage you, highly encourage you, go to our Facebook page, Chad Gonzalez Ministries, or go to our YouTube channel, and we've got the video of both of those situations. We've got the video of dealing with the deaf woman in Oklahoma and dealing with the mute man in Cusco, Peru. We've got video of that, and you can watch while that's actually happening. Not just, you don't get to hear just the testimony of the people, but you get to see it while it's happening, the whole thing in its entirety. And, and the, in both situations, it's just th- those happened, you know, two years ago, two or three years ago, and they still move me uh, and just seeing those people get set free of that. Well, there were some other stories that I wanted to tell you about. One was a situation that was in our church, and there was a young man who had had a skin disease for quite a long time. Uh, from what I understand, had had it since childhood. And he and his brother had come to a healing conference that we were doing. His brother was instantly healed of a short leg and scoliosis in his back. And I was going to pray for this young man that had this skin disease that was a younger brother. I was, this happened on a Friday night. And then some things happened, and I just didn't get to him, forgot about it. And we closed out the service. Well, we had service on Saturday night the next day. And so I'm going along ministering, and we're laying hands on people, ministering to people. And I saw this young man with a skin disease. Well, so I went to the far back corner, laid my hands on him, began to pray over him, and, and immediately began to sense that this was a demonic force behind this. So we dealt with that demon. We took authority over that demon, told it to go. And we didn't see like an instant manifestation of anything uh, with this young man. But this young man was in bad shape. Uh, His skin would have to be wrapped. You couldn't touch him, really couldn't hug him. He'd be in extreme pain. His skin was bursting. Uh, Dead dead skin was just constantly flaking off of him, fall on his seat, carpet, wherever he was at. He was just in a really bad situation. Doctors didn't have a cure for it. So that happened on a Saturday night. Well, about four weeks went by, and I hadn't seen him. And this one particular Sunday, I'm standing at the, uh, the exit doors of the church, greeting people as they go out. Him and his father start walking out. I recognized the father, but I didn't recognize him. Looked like a completely different guy. His skin w- was all clear. His complexion was clear. He had put on weight. He was able to eat what he needed to. He was, he was healed. And it all stemmed from uh, dealing with that demonic force that was causing this physical issue, you know, for close to 20 years in this young man. And it really just kept him captive because of this disease. So that, that situation, it was demonic. Well, one that's very, very personal to me is a story that happened, a situation that happened with my dad. My dad back in uh, 2005, I believe it was 2005, was diagnosed with stage three uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, there's no cure for lymphoma. And we were going to start our church in College Station in 2006. And uh, so at that point, I'd been studying more in the area of healing. And and it was a good thing that I did because, you know, during that time we found out what my dad's diagnosis was. So at stage three, it's pretty serious. There's no cure. They can't do anything about it. Well, my dad kind of started his own version of healing school. And every morning he would get up, he'd read his devotional, read his Bible, be listening to, you know, some really good faith teachers and listening to some good teaching on healing. And he did that for years and years and years and didn't take any chemo or anything like that for a long time. And the, the cancer, it, it didn't necessarily get much better, but it didn't get worse. And, you know, with, with stage three lymphoma, you know, you've probably got three to five years tops on that. Well, I mean, he made it past year three, four, five, year six, seven, eight. Uh, he, he had, I think by around year eight or nine, he had started doing some kind of like experimental uh, studies experimental medications, something like that, but just wasn't seeing a lot of results with it. And so it was around year 10. I mean, he's, he's at this point, already lived way past what he should have uh, with the diagnosis that, that he was given. And I'll never forget my mom. She called me and she said, Chad, you really, this was in the summer. 
She said, you really need to be praying for your dad. Uh, she said he went to his last uh, scan at MD Anderson, and they found several more tumors. And they're pretty much saying, you know, he either needs to ca- take some chemo to help kind of prolong this. Because that, because basically at that point, there's nothing else they can do. Well, I was planning on going to Kenneth Copeland's Minister's Conference, which is going to be later on uh, that year. And so I told her, I said, hey, I'm going to be going to this. Lacey's not going to be able to go with me. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to get Dad to go with me to this conference. So months goes by. It's time for the conference in January. And my dad, he flies. We, we fly in, meet each other up in Dallas. And we head over to Kenneth Copeland's Minister's Conference. And I will never forget, uh, we're sitting there. It's the very first service that night. And Kenneth uh, gets up to minister, and before he, he begins his message, he said, you know, there's some people here uh, that's been diagnosed with cancer. I want you to come up here. I'm going to minister to you. And so about six people got up. I saw getting up, walking up there. My dad was real hesitant in going up, and I looked at him. I said, are you going to go? And he said, well, I, you know, I believe that I'm healed. And I said, yeah, but, you know, Brother Copeland didn't say anybody who's been healed of cancer. And he said, who's been diagnosed? So you ought to go up there. And my dad looked at me and said, well, yeah, you're right. So he gets up. We're sitting in the middle section, kind of toward the back. He goes through all the people. There's already six people up there in line. And Brother Copeland and Miss Gloria, they're laying hands on, on each one, going through and praying for them. Well, my dad goes up. My dad was the last person. And Kenneth Copeland walked up to him, went to lay hands on him. And he got about, got about six inches to him. And then he stopped. And he stepped back a couple of feet. And it was, it was like fire lit up in his eyes. I mean, I could see it from the back. And it was like a cat jumping on a mouse. He ran forward. He started slapping my dad on his chest and on his arms. And he said, you foul spirit, you get off of him. You get out of him in the name of Jesus. And I mean, Brother Copeland just went off, going off on this. And I had begun, years prior, I'd, I'd been wondering if it was a demonic deal. Now, at this point in time, I was still just so so new to everything, still learning things. And of course, we still are, but like I, I didn't know much back then. But I'd been wondering if it was a demonic deal because he lived well past what Dr. said he should have, and yet he really wasn't taking any medication or anything. He'd just been sticking in the Word, staying in the Word, but there really was no progress either. It was just kind of staying dormant. Well, Brother Copeland ministered to him, and then... He stopped and he said, what's your name? My dad said, my name's Wayne. And he turned my dad around, faced the congregation. He said, everybody, I want you to look at Wayne. Look at how different he looks. And and friends, I'm being honest. He did. He looked totally different. But it it was just like a glow about him. I don't know how to explain it. And I remember my dad, uh, he, he, he got done, walked back to his chair, and he sat down beside me. And I'll never forget, he looked at me. He said, Chad, I got it. I know I got it. And that was the first time in a long time that I saw a boldness and a confidence come from him of having victory over this particular situation. Well, he had had a a follow-up appointment at MD Anderson that was already been scheduled for months that following Tuesday. And so I remember we were there for for three days in, in Fort Worth at the conference. And like all throughout the day, every day, my dad kept telling me, I cannot wait to get to the doctor and see what they have to say. Well, sure enough, he goes to the doctor the following Tuesday. They run all the scans and everything. And then it takes about a week for them to get the results. And the following week, I got a phone call from uh, him. And he told me, he said, the doctors can't find any cancer. There's no more cancer. All the tumors are gone. Well, I mean, that was was proof enough for me that what I had started kind of picking up and wondering about was true, that it was demonic. And that was the reason why... Um, you know, he was doing all the right things and he was, he was watching his words, his confession. He was reading his Bible, staying in the word. He was doing all these things, but really wasn't seeing any progress. And the reason was because this was demonic. In this situation, this cancer that was on my dad, it was demonic. It was demonic oppression that was causing this, uh, demon or causing this cancer. And so that was a real learning experience for me. Well, then we just had this, this, this last um, situation happen. This just happened recently in our church. And it was back last spring. There was a young girl in our church. 
And all of a sudden, she I think she's, I want to say she's like seven, eight years old. She started losing her hair. A young little girl. And so the parents, they, they took her to the hospital, took her to different doctors, specialists. Nobody could figure out what was going on. Uh, finally ended up going to uh, St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital over in Memphis. And they diagnosed her with an extremely, extremely rare uh, autoimmune disease. And they said that this particular disease, it just, it affects the hair follicles. And, and there's no cure for it. Well, so we had found out about this. This is uh, last spring. And just for different situations, different things kept coming up. I either got busy toward the end of service or, uh, you know, the parents weren't there or when they were there, someone's coming up and talking to me and I wouldn't get to get to them before they left. And so it was about roughly about a month after they had gotten the diagnosis. And this particular Sunday, I was teaching on healing. And toward the end of the service, I just I got this 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 knowing on the inside. We need to go minister to this little girl. I knew the anointing was there to minister to her. So I told the parents. I said, "Hey, would you, would you get your daughter? Bring her up here and let's, let's minister to her." So they brought her up. And when I put my hands on her, I knew it was demonic. Now I did not say it in the microphone. And I didn't say anything to the parents. I just said it under my breath. Uh, I took, turned my mic off. I said it under my breath so nobody would hear. But, but I said it under my, under my breath. And I said, you foul spirit, I command you to get off of her in the name of Jesus. And we command this hair to begin to grow back. I said it very quietly. No, nobody heard me, not even the, the little girl, the parents that were right there beside me. Well, months goes by. And the little girl, she was wearing a hat a, a, a lot of the times because she had she had lost all of her hair in the in the front. Well, I, I believe it was maybe maybe two or three months went by, and the father told me, he said, "Chad, you're not gonna believe it. Like hair is starting to grow back. She's got she's got like peach fuzz in there." And so, um, over over the last few months, you know, she's seeing more and more cro- progress. The hair is growing back, and then here two weeks ago. Uh, I got a chance to, to spend a little time with him out in the in the lobby of our church. And she had her hat on. I said, hey, can I see your hair? And she pulled her hat off. And, and friends, she had a full head of hair. And she started smiling. She said, she said, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm waiting for my bangs to grow out. You know, she's ready to get her bangs back. And it was just so exciting to see, you know, her, her face lit up like that. But can you imagine as a young child, especially as a girl, you know, not having any hair and the doctor saying, there's no cure for this. There's nothing we can do. And you're going to have to go through your teenage years and adult years as a woman and being bald. That's just not a good, good thing. And that's certainly not the will of God. But this, this was a demonic issue, and we dealt with that in uh, and, and the manner that was needed to. And we got the result that we wanted. So really, really cool thing. And I know we're just kind of rushing through this, and we're going to spend more time next month's episode And we'll talk specifically about uh, ministering to people and dealing with with the demon, using our authority over that, and uh, and just go into more detail. I really feel like this is something that needs to be talked about more. We need to expand our thinking and our mindset in regards to our authority, be a lot more sensitive uh, to these things when we're ministering, listening to the Holy Spirit as to what the root cause is. Uh, I want to give you this. I want to make sure I give you this because we had some questions about this. Uh, one of the questions was, how do I know if it's a healing issue or if it's a demonic issue? Well, number one, I always treat it like it's a healing issue. I always, I'll always go into it like it's a healing issue unless I hear differently. Um, but the times that it was demonic, in almost every case, as soon as I put my hands on them, I knew. It wasn't like an angel showed up or the you know, the, the sky opened up, the, the ceiling opened up, and I began to see things. Um, I knew, j- just that, that inward witness, that knowing on the inside, I knew it was demonic. There's only been one time so far that I have actually seen something, uh, see, seeing that it, it was a demonic thing, and I'll tell you about that next month. But all these other, all these other times and cases, I knew on the inside, just that knowing a supernatural knowing, a word of knowledge, I knew that it was demonic and how to deal with it. Uh, but there's also sometimes some other signs, uh, you know, especially just if you think about this, that, you know, if you're doing everything you know you're supposed to be doing and, and a lot of time's going by and you're just not getting a breakthrough in the situation, 
Well, it, it might be demonic. It might be a demonic force that's behind that and the root cause of that. Uh, and especially if you know you're ha- this person or you know or you maybe you've been having pains, aches, having physical issues, problems. Uh, you've gone to multiple doctors, multiple specialists. They can't find anything wrong. They're, they're telling you there's nothing wrong with you. They're not sure why this is happening. Well, it might it might be a demonic deal that needs to be dealt with, and and you using your authority over it. But we'll talk about that more detail next month, and I'll give you some more situations um, that we've dealt with, and how and give you the the practical piece of how we dealt with that, and what we did, and helping you so that you when you're out and ministering to other people, uh, you've got some more tools in your tool belt and know how to use them. So. We'll talk about how we deal with the demonic forces, how we take control of them, and next month's episode of the Supernatural Life podcast. Uh, As always, we just ask if you would please, if you haven't subscribed to our website, we'll send you one of our free e-books. And subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on any new episodes that are uploaded. Also, if you haven't taken part of the Healing Academy, please do so. We have gotten such a great response uh, to that. We've got over 12 countries represented. Several churches are using it for their small groups or their own healing school. And we will be releasing uh, Volume 2 uh, some point next month. And so super excited about that. So anyway, uh, hey, go to our website. Check out all the things that are going on. Subscribe to our social media channels. We've got lots of good things coming up here in the next few months. Uh, God bless you guys. Remember that in Christ, we always win. We'll talk to you next month. Bye-bye.